big thanks to our producers for this week's episode. Danielle, Ginger, Mike to the D, Cat OJ, Devin, Savannah, Pixel Donut, Janelle, Michelle, Diane, Joy, Josh, Shorty9867, Lauren, Rebecca, Araceli, Elani Hawaii, Obese J, and KDP. Also, thanks to our contributors, user Sharks Air Day, user Art What, the user Heidi Jones, and user Mother of Plant Killers. Now, get comfy and prepare yourself for another episode of The Nightmare Society. So last night I was at a classmate's house working on a group project we have due tomorrow. I live in an apartment in the town where our university is located and my classmate lives at his parents house which is in the foothills just outside of town. In order to get to the house you have to drive along a relatively secluded and narrow two lane road for about five to six miles. We started working on the project at about 6 p.m. and I ended up hanging around for a while after we had finished working. So I left his house pretty late at about 11 and started down the road back towards town. I didn't realize how tough it would be to navigate the road at night. There were no street lights and the road was unkept and riddled with potholes. On top of this I had no cell service so I had to drive very slowly to make sure I didn't blow out one of my tires since I had used my spare a couple of weeks back. I figure I was about three miles from the house when I rounded a tight corner and saw a pickup truck with a camper shell parked diagonally across the road. The manner in which it was parked completely impeded my path and I couldn't drive around it because there was a gully on both sides of the road. The only way for me to go at this point was backward, where there was a pull-off that I could use to turn my car around. At first I couldn't see inside the cab, but when I turned on my high beams I saw that there was a man slouched over in the driver's seat, his head resting against the steering wheel as if he had been knocked out after a bad accident. I immediately sensed something was wrong the way his car had just coincidentally come to rest in a position that totally blocked the road was a big red flag for me. I had heard stories of people playing dead in the road as a way to lure unsuspecting people out of their car so they could rob them. I decided, screw this, and elected to go back to my classmate's house and explain what was going on. I threw the car into reverse and kept my eyes darting back and forth between my rear view and the truck. I looked and saw that I was almost to the pull off where I could turn around. When I looked back my heart skipped about five beats. The man who had been slouched over in the driver's seat was now walking at my car in a hurried pace while a few other men jumped out of the camper shell and started moving towards me as well. I panicked and accelerated backwards into the pull-off, which messed up the undercarriage of my car pretty bad. As I put it into drive, the guy was already at my passenger side door tugging on the handle, which, thank God, was locked. I only caught a brief glimpse of him, but his face appeared to be scabbed and leathery, definitely a meth head or some sort of drug abuser. I sped away and didn't slow down until I reached the house, constantly checking my rear view to see if they were following. Thankfully, they didn't tail me, and when I reached the house, I explained what had happened to my classmate, and we called the cops. I was grateful that my buddy's parents were kind enough to let me stay the night. They didn't find anyone on the road matching the description but I filed an incident report and they told me they would be on the lookout for similar vehicles and suspicious activity. But holy crap, I'm still so shook up over it. I keep getting the same adrenaline rush I got when I saw the guy charging me whenever I think about it.
So this happened back in 2013. I was 17. My family was looking at this house and the owner showed up and talked with my parents. Seemed like a nice older man built the house himself. It's a pretty nice two-story house overlooking a river. Anyway, I was standing back watching everyone talk. And as the owner is talking and laughing, there's a break in the conversation where he turns away from my parents. And his expression completely and instantly changes from happy to the most sinister and hateful scowl I've ever seen. I don't think he noticed me watching. I probably appeared to be on my phone as my head was down. As soon as he turned back, he instantly went back to smiling. It was just so creepy and honestly made me feel sick. I told my mom who said it was weird, but maybe he's just awkward. So, we got the house. We moved in and the next weekend my family is going to church, but I don't really feel like going. So they all leave me at home. It's a Sunday morning at about 11am when I hear a really loud banging outside. It's rhythmic and coming from the side of the house. I was on the other side of the house on the second floor. Honestly, I idiotically thought it was the wind, maybe. It was stormy that day. And I didn't think much of it. It stopped after about five minutes. Ten minutes later, I hear walking around downstairs. Chairs moving. Kitchen cabinets opening and the fridge opening. I immediately, quietly go lock my door. Grab my baseball bat and call 911. While I tell them my address, I text my mom and tell her that someone is in the house and that I've called 911. At that point, the 911 operator said that someone was 10 minutes out. I could hear footsteps walking towards the stairs. Basically, the house is so thin I could track where he was in the house. At this time, my mom responded that she's on her way. She's 30 minutes away. So here's a 17 year old, 5 foot 2, 100 pound girl hunkered in her room, full well knowing that if he came in he'd overpower me and take the bat. I was completely terrified. I heard him walk down the hallway towards my door. I saw the handle turn and stop. It was locked. I heard him stand there. He didn't move. I could hear his breathing. It felt like forever, but really I think it was about 10 seconds. I heard him turn around and go back down. I heard the back door open and shut. And about three minutes later, the police pulled up. The 911 operator asked me if I could let them in or if they needed to force it. I knew he had left, so I let them in. No one was there. No sign of forced entry. Nothing. When my mom got there, she looked at my stepdad and asked if he had changed the locks. He had not. I think the creepiest part is, and what really validated my story, was that my mom had just vacuumed the hallway, and there were shoe prints that were larger than anyone in our house, and the police had not been up, and the footsteps stopped just outside my room. Lesson learned. Please don't forget to change your locks. A couple of months ago, while I was house sitting and dog sitting for my parents, I had an eerie feeling. As an obsessive ID channel watcher and younger female, I played it off as paranoia. During these few days, whenever I took the dog out, he suddenly began sniffing areas he never sniffed before, particularly under each of our windows. And thankfully, it's because of him that I discovered two larger footprints under a window that looked directly into our living and dining room. 
Around this same time, about two months ago, I noticed a man walking up and down our street. I had never seen him in the entirety of my life, and this is a small midwestern town. He also had, in my opinion, odd mannerisms. Prolonged eye contact, continued staring and craning his neck as he walked by, and never returned my smiles, hellos, or waves. Eventually, I became irritated due to how creeped out I was with both him and the eerie feeling in general, and decided to wave. Upon no acknowledgement in return, other than a cold stare, I got up and acted like I was going to follow him down the street, to which that made him walk faster and turn a sudden corner. Never saw him again. Now today, I help my parents by picking up their dog from the groomers as it's right up the street and a safe suburban area. Oftentimes, I don't lock the doors while running errands in town. When I returned home with the dog, I had an unexplained horrible feeling the minute I walked in the door. Something, maybe a blanket, seemed misplaced. Something was off. I threw a load of laundry on in the basement and quickly stood up and looked around. No one there. Then I proceeded to the bathroom to check my makeup, and right then I looked down to my left, and there's feces in the toilet, with no toilet paper, and not flushed. I've been the only one home all morning. I immediately throw back the shower curtain and start shaking. And when nothing is there, I close the bathroom door and lock myself inside. I called dispatch. They arrived in less than two minutes. They searched the entire property, make me check my laptop to see if any recent search history is not my own, which I found interesting, and check the refrigerator to see if food is missing. All valuables are accounted for. I know this is not my feces. No one in my family would have a bowel movement and not use toilet paper or flush. I know someone's been here. Yet because I love horror movies and the ID channel, they think I'm crazy. Hey dude, I now have my dad's hunting fillet knife on me. So, let's not meet. About two years ago, I moved from my college town in Arizona to Woodland Hills, California for my new job. I was 21 and living alone in a studio within two blocks of an outdoor mall and gym. The apartments were older, built in the mid-70s, but well-maintained with a fence and cameras around the entire complex and gated entrances. It was a fairly nice area, mostly young professionals and families, and it felt pretty safe. After this incident, I refused to leave my apartment complex alone after dark. One night, I decided to take a walk after my workout. It was barely nightfall and still fairly warm. I grabbed my water bottle and started walking past the gym in the opposite direction of my apartment. I walked for a little while, turned around, and started walking home. That's when I noticed a white Escalade with completely blacked out windows that had passed me previously, passed me again. They drove down to the light and made the turn, so I thought nothing of it. Only when I saw the car for a third time did I start to panic. By this point it was well past dark and most people were headed home from the gym and the outdoor mall. I was still a few blocks from the gym and the car kept driving past, slowing down and speeding back up if they saw anyone around. I cut through the parking lot to try to get to the closest store open, a McDonald's. Before I knew it, the Escalade was back and in the parking lot between me and the McDonald's. 
The car started slowly circling the parking lot, and the windows rolled down part way to reveal three men in their 30s to 40s just staring at me. At that point I was frozen and decided to stand under a light by a closed store while frantically trying to call my friend from the apartment complex to come and get me. My mom, friends from other states, anyone, so I wasn't as alone. The Escalade kept circling, slowing down to barely an idle every time they passed me. I saw the door of the McDonald's open and a younger guy come out, clearly done with his shift, and headed to his car. I started yelling for him to wait and needed help, and took off running towards him. The Escalade sped out of the parking lot back to the nearest light and turned again. I apologized to the younger guy for scaring him and asked if he could please walk me to the gym, thinking the men were probably gone and I could wait a few minutes there before walking back to my apartment. We got to the gym and he made sure I felt safe there before going back to his car. I waited for 10 minutes, still trying to reach my friend who lived in my complex so he could come and get me. I wasn't able to get a reply from him, so I called one of my girlfriends from back home to talk to and started walking the rest of the way home. I got past the main intersection before the car turned down my road and started following me again. My heart sank, and I had a horrible feeling that if I didn't get inside the gate before they got to me, I'd never be seen again. I broke into a sprint and screamed into my phone I'm being followed and for my friend not to hang up. The gate had just started to close behind another resident's car, and I barreled through it, sprinting the full way back to my apartment and locking the door. About three hours later, I went to take my dog to go potty before bed, and out of curiosity, or sheer stupidity, I walked back towards the gate I came running through, still safe within the fence. I saw the Escalade parked on the other side of the road, waiting just outside the camera's field of view. I calmly turned and walked my dog on the interior of the apartment complex, out of their sight. They came back to the same spot every night for several days, and then I never saw them again. So guys who tried to kidnap me, let's not meet. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget we have merch available. The link will be in the description. And if you'd like to pitch in and support the podcast, you can do so on patreon.com slash nightmare society. Until next time. Swan, swan.